You are watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Sal Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. I'm Catherine Bullock. Later on, we will talk with Sama Al Ibyari, the Secretary of the Montreal Chapter of the Canadian Council of Muslim Women, how she helped a French school celebrate Islamic History Month. But first, some news headlines. 50 states urge China to release Uyghurs. Yellowknife's new Islamic Center under construction. Film captures the tale of imprisoned Saudi blogger. Pakistani ex-Prime Minister begins long march on Islamabad. Now the details. 50 states have urged China yesterday to comply with the recommendation set out in a UN report that accuses the country of possible crimes against humanity. The states also demand that China release Uyghurs and other Muslim ethnic groups who have been arbitrarily deprived of their liberty in East Turkestan. Canada's UN Ambassador Bob Ray read the statement at a meeting of the General Assembly's Human Rights Committee. Ray expressed concern about China's lack of response to the ongoing human rights violations. The 50 countries also demanded clarification about the fate of missing family members, asking China to arrange safe reunions. China has called the meeting, quote, disinformation propaganda. The Islamic Center of Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories is set to open its doors as soon as next summer to the growing Muslim community. The construction crew is working on completing the structure of the two-story 7,500 square foot building so they can move to the interior design. Mike Singh, Vice Chair of the Islamic Society of North America, Canada, says that construction season is short in Yellowknife so the crew is rushing to get the building structure ready. The Canada Community Revitalization Fund provided seed money for the construction, with the rest coming from community fundraisers. This will be the only mosque in Yellowknife. Award-winning filmmakers Patricio Enriquez and Luc Cote are releasing a new documentary on November 4th titled Waiting for Rafe. The documentary was filmed over eight years and follows the Quebec-based Ensef Haider's battle to free her husband, Saudi blogger Rafe Badawi. Badawi was imprisoned for 10 years and lashed a thousand times in 2012 for promoting liberal views of Islam. The producers captured the challenges Haider faced when she arrived as a refugee in Quebec in 2013, raising her three children and fighting for her husband's freedom. Badawi was released earlier this year, but cannot leave Saudi Arabia until 2032. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan launched Friday a long march on the capital Islamabad to demand early elections. The former international cricket star was booted from office in April by a no-confidence vote by opposition members. However, Khan retains mass public support in the country. Thousands of people gathered in the eastern city of Lahore from where a convoy began the journey. The march is expected to take around a week. Khan has railed against the current government, accusing them of being imposed by a conspiracy involving the United States. The military, which has ruled Pakistan for much of its 75 year history, defended the institutions from Khan's accusations. They were meddling in politics. And that's it for the news. October was Islamic History Month. It was the first time that Nova Scotia recognized the month officially. We recently talked with Sama Al Ibyari, Secretary of the Montreal Chapter of the Canadian Council of Muslim Women, about how a French school system in Ontario celebrated the month. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum assalam, Sister Kati. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to see you again. You are the secretary of the Montreal chapter of the Canadian Council of Muslim Women, and you have been involved in helping a school in Ontario celebrate Islamic Heritage Month or History Month. Tell us about that. 
Yes, well, actually, it's called the Conseil des Écoles Publiques de l'Est de l'Ontario. So mm -hmm. it's a francophone school commission in Ontario, and this is why they reach out to our Montreal chapter. And they wanted a resource person to speak about uh, Islamic History Month, precisely the month of uh, October. And what age is the school? How old are the children that you came into? Oh, school? They have several schools. In fact, they, they have 14 schools. So it's a school commission. And uh, some of the schools were elementary schools, some were secondary schools, so age 14 to 18, some were, were mixed. And you went and spoke in all 14? No, we, we just went to Ottawa for uh, two days. Uh, mm -hmm. It was myself and also Yasser Halhul from the Can uh, National Council of Canadian Muslims because mm -hmm. they asked us to have one woman and one man. So we both went there mm -hmm. and we spent two days in Ottawa. Uh, the first day it was uh, in a secondary school and uh, Samir MP Samir Zuberi was invited and he addressed the students mm -hmm. and uh, afterwards there was an activity, a quiz activity mm -hmm. for uh, students asking them how much they knew about uh, Muslims and Islam. Let me, so let me pause you there. I, I'll ask you about the quiz activity in a moment, but let's just go back to having the MP there. That must have been quite something for the students to have a, an MP. Absolutely, absolutely. He was so warmly received hmm. and uh, he, he spoke about his program. The, the students asked him all kinds of questions, where he came from, uh, what was his origin. And uh, it, it was wonderful to see this uh, interaction between the MP and the students talking so freely. There were lots of uh, administrators there. So I would think it was a big success. That's good to hear. And he was conversing with them in French or English? Well, he, it was both actually. It mm. was a bilingual address. Mm. Uh, I must uh, say that uh, all the students spoke English, so I, I think their maternal language is English, mm. and uh, they're in the, these schools to learn French, so they, uh -huh. they spoke both. So it's like a French immersion program where they go in and they do all their lessons in French. Well, they are encouraged to speak French in those schools, mm -hmm. but uh, you also hear a lot of English and you can uh, find out by the accent that mm -hmm. uh, their mother tongue is English. Mm -hmm. Then about the quiz, what kind of questions were you asking? And they were asking them what is the proportion of Muslims in Canada, what is the most uh, significant uh, place, uh, mosque for Muslims, um, that, that, that kind of question, what is uh, Ramadan, mm -hmm. uh, how many prayers do we perform per day? Mm -hmm. And did you find that there were a lot of Muslim students in the assembly or was it mostly non-Muslim? Yes, this was a very surprising fact that uh, some of the schools had over 40% of Muslim students there and visibly Muslims like girls, many girls were wearing a headscarf, others were not. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also a very diverse ethnic background. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of them were uh, from East uh, Asia, some of them were uh, had African origins, uh, some of them were, were from the Middle East, so, so mm -hmm. quite diverse. Mm -hmm. And then why, why would you be surprised at such a high percentage of Muslims in the school? Because I didn't expect to have to find a concentration of Muslims in the Ottawa area. Mm, mm. Well, then they would have find those questions about what is Ramadan and five times prayer very easy. What about? Go ahead. It, yes, indeed. I I thought that the questions were basic, were mm -hmm. easy, and most of the answers were uh, correct. Mm. Uh, however, I, I mean, if we talk about 40% of the population in the school, but the, they're also the others. Mm. So it was quite an interesting interaction. Mm -hmm. It must have exposed a big uh, difference between what the Muslims knew and what the non-Muslims knew. Well, I wouldn't be sure how the Muslims voted and the others too. I think that both need to, ha to have some uh, good uh, information, some good background about uh, the Muslims and also Islam. 
you said you went to another school. So the first one was a secondary school and the second one was that an elementary school? Uh, uh, the second one was also uh, mixed. The, oh. There was the elementary and the secondary, but we went to these uh, to the secondary part of it mm -hmm. for uh, to present actually a documentary. Oh, tell us about the documentary. The documentary was uh, produced by Institute F, based here in Montreal, mm -hmm. and it features five very uh, successful, I would say, young Muslim women. So mm -hmm. they talked about their career, they talked about what they want to do in the future, they talked about how they overcame challenges, mm -hmm. and uh, after the documentary we had a, a discussion. Now, I don't want to get too political, but we know that in Quebec there is Bill 21 that's preventing women in a headscarf from working in certain jobs. So is that same sentiment uh, of hostility towards uh, Muslim women and Islam in the French school system? How did you find it? No, uh, actually, Katia, I was very pleasantly surprised to find that there was no tension mm. that we see here that we witness in Quebec. Mm. And... Uh, Moreover, some of the young students told us, well, we have no problems with Muslims and Islamophobia. It's more the older generation who should be coming and speaking to our parents. Mm. That's that, those are the things that they were telling you after the documentary? It, right. Mm. Was there any other really memorable interaction that, that really struck you when you visited those schools? The, the fact that the, uh, the perennial question of having a place for prayers and adhering to the times of the prayers and whether they're going to interfere with the classes, mm. the, this, seems, this seems to be a real concern. Amongst the students or the teachers? Among the students, among the teachers, among administrators. Mm -hmm. So we have seen this in universities, and I was surprised also to see it in uh, the yeah, elim not elementary schools, but uh, uh, secondary schools. Do you have a way of answering that to make them feel assured? Well, I, I started a consultation to find out if we can, for instance, pray Zohr before the Azan. There's another problem. Who is the authority to tell us when exactly the Azan takes place? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, what would be better to ask students to uh, pray at the end of the day at 3.30 after classes are over or to tell them to pray at home. Mm. So these are questions that we are still exploring. Mm. And I must say, I found that there is a school commissioner who is uh, studying this and who is going to be coming up with recommendations. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but this is obviously a very important topic. So perhaps we'll check in uh, and get an update later on. But thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Sister Kathy. Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, please share, like and subscribe. Stay safe and God bless.